All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Thursday, May 2nd. I was just watching this video on uh, on CNBC. <laughs> they showed this. I don't know, some guy uh, <laughs> apparently at a Dodgers game, I guess this is, where he missed a foul ball. He had food in his hand, and, and same place. The guy went back and got more food. After dropping some of his food, and then drop, and then the foul ball gets to him again. <laughs> uh, sometimes you gotta laugh a little bit. It's funny stuff, uh, and then completely tries again to catch the foul ball and spills his food. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. All right, so we'll go over today's price action. Like I said, sometimes you got you gotta relax and and laugh a little bit at these things. So what did we get today? Uh, you know. Like I thought yesterday, if you've been following my videos for the last couple nights, you know, I, I thought we would get a little bit of weakness. I thought the VIX closing on the highs yesterday, as well as the market closing on the lows, was, was a recipe for some continuation to the downside. Uh, I would say a, a little bit tricky today, right? They never make it easy. I would have, I, you know, again, I always try to like think of perfect, perfect scenarios and try to, um, try to get a little bit cute with my with what I'm thinking for the day but I would have thought we would have sold off right on the open or come in and been down 30 or four basis points when I when I woke up this morning and I saw that we were up 10 basis points I'm like Ugh. Uh, because it just it's a you know to me it means that we're probably going to um, either sell off on the open or fail and then go lower but um, yeah, I mean, and that's basically what we did in the first half hour. You know, this this market, it, it's even though you can have a plan for the day, it still can be tricky and fakey out from day to day. So, you know, it looked like we were going to recover here, and we got back to I guess the pre market high. I've got S and P futures up, uh, by the way, and um, it just did not uh, could not go. And then we started to see more of like the waterfall selling. Uh, but you know we did find find support. We took out some couple levels that we talked about pre market. Here was my trading plan in the beginning of the day, which I sent out to members. I said my conviction level for today to take new trades is equals low. Uh, I wouldn't mind going lower this morning and then rebounding in the afternoon or having a Friday rebound. Uh, but I'm probably being too cute with my assumptions. And, you know, sure enough, uh, you know, right on the open, we try to go a little bit higher. Noticed a, a bunch of things, you know, that kind of helped a little bit, like not chasing some things. Uh, AMD was one thing where we saw a little bit of call buying in the beginning of the day. And, you know, the value area is just really giving me a, a heads up. You know, this is great for scalps. Uh, you know, if you want to buy on the open and then, you know, make sure that you're selling once you get to the top of value, because once we got to the top of value, you know, and AMD did fine today overall up 5%, but what a great place to take a target. I think the same thing, you know, another name that I was watching today was Alibaba rallied, you know, a little bit more than the S&P. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, right? Because, uh, you know, this was a healthy bounce on the open and then, you know, thank goodness for the for the value areas because that went right to the top of value and stopped. Uh, this we we talked about this name yesterday, and I'll just wait for Thinkorswim to do its thing here for a second. But we talked about this taking out a virgin point of control yesterday in Baba. So you know, so how do I trade this at this point? Once we've taken out one of these virgin point of controls, I have to wait personally. I have to wait for the price to get back above the purple line. So uh, that was on the radar today. Um, and then once we see a little bit of selling pressure, I go to my go-to names, like names that I like to buy and weakness. Um, I'll show you a couple of the names that we traded in the, in the room today. Uh, Microsoft was one of them. Let's, go, let's bring up the Microsoft chart. But remember a name that had outstanding earnings gapped up but look, it's it's actually it filled the gap today back down, so it's kind of just right back in, just into the trajectory that it was. Um, also, what I liked about this, and I'm wearing a little bit of this, uh, uh, we I traded this this twice today, and ended up wearing some uh, at the close. But you've got that support, 125.34. So we'll see if that holds for tomorrow. Uh, you know, a couple other names that I was looking at today was Google. It's been three days. Uh, you know, that's always the rule. It's funny because I put this out on Twitter earlier. I said, hey, is this the three-day rule 
for Google and people are like, what's the three day rule? The three day rule, if you're not familiar, is normally when there's a bad earnings report, most people wait, most traders wait three days for the bad news to kind of settle in. Uh, I've, I talked about that right after when, when Google reported and I said, sometimes retail traders, as soon as they see something down, down they wanna buy it. Generally, that's they're usually a little bit early. Um, most, like I said, institutional traders wait three days uh, before, while that bad news has been out. So it's been three days now, and sometimes it's the fourth day where you get a little bit of a rebound. But we'll see if that happens for, for Google. I did play, um, I'm in a couple next, not this week, but next week calls looking for a rebound. So really short, out of my characteristics, characteristics um, going to something a little bit short term. Uh, what else did I look at today or play? Um, trade, I should say. I was able to, oh, uh, Chipotle was a, was something really nice that we kind of called in the room earlier. I traded this just small today, but Chipotle, again, another, uh, I thought the, the chart was compelling on multiple time frames because I noticed it had a little bit of strength to it. By the way, VPOC taken out here and that was the highest it's went. But look at the support, both the 50 day, 50 day moving average purple line as well as the um, the top of value and and look at the full bar today and a lot of the restaurants with this uh, this um, new IPO what uh, beyond beyond meat which a couple people uh, traded in the room today what what an IPO thrilling I think for those investors who got into that name but look at what Chipotle did and even like I always look for names you know I try to point this out with Google which didn't exactly work but I always look for names that are doing a little bit something when, right, let's go to the Q's for a minute. Right, the Q's doing this. If Thinkorswim will work with me here. Right, the Q's selling off hard. And then you look at Chipotle. No sell off, just digestion. Get it? Digestion? Haha. <laughs> Uh, but this was real nice off the open. I think a couple of traders in the room caught this um, through value area. And then, you know, when everything else was selling off, it only just came in slightly. Um, and that's where I played it and um, didn't play it all the way to the end of the day, but nice little scalp for the day. But again, whenever there's something like that going on where the whole market is selling off and, and you know, one or two names are, are not doing that, uh, I think that's usually a, a, a pretty good pickup for the day. So um, a, a couple other levels that we took out in the indices, uh, you know, these were all things that we were kind of pointing out in the room this morning, but there was a virgin point of control. This is sometimes the case where you, we, we go a little bit lower and then we actually rebound, right? IWM, I don't think took that one out. I thought IWM was really nice uh, performance for the day. Um, you know, again, I think people, you got to zoom out a little bit because you know, you see these these red bars and we just haven't had any volatility at all recently. So you kind of forget, you, you, you lose the muscle memory of seeing every once in a while a, a tiny sell-off. Um, overall, and we'll look at the IWM chart and we'll look at the, as I'm jumping around here in today's today's video, but um, I mean, this looks, this does not look bad for IWM. A lot of chop back and forth. Um, we'll see which way this thing ends up breaking. I still think that this breaks to the upside, but we'll wait. Um, I think right now what you want to watch, and I think this, this is going to be important for the market, I, I, but I think it's got to break 159 to the upside. Or if it breaks to the downside, then I would watch out. Uh, 158 is that love 157 if you want to call it 157.90 so I, I would be kind of neutral with this right now and let this break and that should give you a nice heads up for the market because i do think the small caps sometimes can lead the moves you know other areas that were cause of concern today um copper is still moving down it seems like there's something not right so this is you know top of my list concerns i would say copper you know, certain things are giving us a little bit of hints, right? So there's there's some negatives today, some positives. I think IWM finishing in the green up almost a half a percent today is a huge win um, and really, really strong. Um, the other side is crude. 
crude, uh, you know, is holding the 50-day moving average. But it's kind of interesting the first time that we've even come come close to the 50-day moving average in crude. Uh, did finish a little bit off the lows, but you know, these these are things to watch. I do think that both copper and oil, there's a little bit of um, risk appetite with these for the overall market, right? I mean, we saw this before when crude sold off. Um, it was a signal that people just, it's risk off, right? So there's a little bit of that, uh, you know, I think to to think about. And this was back on, interesting that this this was, I think, a leading indicator back in October because we there was no bounce whatsoever in crude. You know, if you go back to the S&P for a minute, and we'll look at this chart too while we're going through. But basically, we're just checking back to the 20-day moving average for now. So there's no major uh, issue with this little tiny blip on the um, on the chart. I think oh, right now this is healthy. We want to see these little pull. As I've been saying the last couple of days in the videos, we want to see a little bit of pullback, in my opinion, uh, because things just get too tight to the upside. Uh, so, you know, so back here, right? Um, here's where we started to sell off. But notice we kind of bounced back here. So again, I'm just comparing this to oil and why I think it's relevant. Oil never had any of those bounces and was probably a, a pretty good indicator. So again, something to keep keep an eye on, I think, small caps. Uh, copper, don't want to see copper go any lower here. Would like to see copper bounce back. And... Um, uh, and then crude as well. So I'm just reading a headline about uh, somebody's exiting a stake. Yeah, it looks like an, um, holder Sanofi said to offer shares. So that's just just hit the tape. Um, so I sorry to get distracted there, but um, yeah. So you just kind of have to wait. I mean, normally these these little dips like we're seeing get bought. You know. I, some commentary that I'm that I was hearing about Powell and I was talking to one of my colleagues about the Fed meeting yesterday. First of all, it just seems like the market just reverses sometimes on these Fed meetings. But I don't think there was really anything said. I don't think it mattered what he said. I think if he would have said that that rate cuts are on the table, that would have been viewed negatively. I just think that the market was was just stretched too much to the upside. And there's nowhere else to go. Um, I thought the cues on the one hour was was a really good signal yesterday, right? And this is what the cues look like. Again, just checking back to the 20-day moving average. So far, a healthy dip. We just have to see if it's going to hold. But this was yesterday. So I thought just very t more technicals than what Powell said. And also, it wasn't like anything really was cued off of uh, what Powell said in, in his speech because the market didn't really start to sell off until he was done for 10 minutes. So just like it was in inevitable, uh, and sometimes that's just the case. Uh, there's more more trade headline stuff on the table. I think, you know, something that you want to think about in your mind, right? If you're, my view, and I, again, I give my views on this, I'm not giving any recommendations or advice, but I'm always giving you my views. Uh, you know, this trade stuff, I think is at this point, the risk is to the downside. Uh, I am not personally not expecting a, if you're expecting a big market rally uh, if there if a trade deal gets announced what do you think the market's been doing for the last three months it's been pricing it in in my opinion so I do not expect uh, any major move higher if this trade deal gets announced I think it's priced in uh, or maybe at least what I said in the room today was probably 80 to 85 percent delta that this thing is already priced in. I think if this thing falls apart, you're going to see the market. So so let's let's talk about this like scenario analysis, right? At this point, what do you think is going to happen when, when this trade deal is announced? Maybe a slight move higher. If they don't get this deal done, what do you think is going to happen? I think the market sells off like crazy. So keep that in mind that, you know, um, depending on your view is, I think that that's kind of priced in um, the deal. So I, I, at this point, would not, considering the path that we've gone and the, and the move that has gone up, um, I think it's, I personally think it's priced in. And you could debate me if you think I'm wrong with that. By the, by the way, look at the one hours here on the, um, using the value area. Notice that we have not gotten back into value. So we've gotten, a, we've got a little bit of a bounce at the end of the day, but um, we have not 
gotten back into value, which is not such a great thing. We want to be back inside value. Uh, I'll, look, I'll look at this. Qs have a far way to go to get back to value. Notice we tried to do that in the morning and failed. So like I said, this video, I'm bouncing around to a whole, whole bunch of different things. IWM, which needs to update here and think or swim. Still looking at the Qs chart. And then I'll hit a couple names for, for, um, for earnings. Still waiting, 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 waiting. Think, think or swim. Uh, you know, the, I did not play anything for earnings today, although I wanted to. Um, so IWM looks actually more healthy in right in value. So that's going to need to break 158.53 uh, for continuation to the upside in 156. Notice that we try to break this and came right back in the next hour, which is pretty good. So a couple names that reported. I'll start with this one because I thought this was the most interesting because we this got downgraded earlier in the week. And right when we saw a downgrade, uh, that day a call buyer came in and um, put a nice weekly trade on. So somebody was pretty smart with this uh, into the weakness of the downgrade that happened. Uh, and that was something that we talked about in the trading room. But real nice move for this one. On the flip side, so you got some, you know, kind of... Um, 50-50, I would say, in terms of names this morning, uh, after the close. Arista Networks, that one's down. We'll go back to what's up. Melly, up huge, up to 545. GoDaddy, down. Planet Fitness, down. <laughs> you know, some of these, again, you know, Planet Fitness and um, Arista Networks really have run up a lot. Shake Shack, up pretty decently. Um Data was all over the place. That's now up to 126. Initial reaction was lower, so that's you know pretty nice reaction there. But um, a lot of two-way stuff. Um, ATVI uh, down. Uh, U.S. Steel up. U.S. Steel had good numbers. I have to read more, but the numbers looked very good for a name that's been really beaten down. I'm surprised. Surprised the stock's not higher. Um, noticing. Notice there's a there is a, a VPOC up here at one at 1552. All right, so um, that's it. Video is about 15 minutes long. That's perfect for today. So you know, overall, with these with these little market dips, you know, keep your eyes on a couple indicators. I, I think oil, copper, small caps. Those are probably three of the things that I want to watch. And then you know, just looking for some strength and and uh, for names that are in really big uptrends that have come in a little bit. All right, so we'll leave it there. I uh, will see how. Uh, Friday's trading day is hopefully we have a nice a nice fun day tomorrow uh, no jinx have a great night everybody and see you tomorrow